Hi everyone, this lesson is on side effects from pantoprazole, which is also known as Proteinix and Pantaloc. So we're going to talk about the side effects in this lesson, and we're also going to talk about why they occur. Now let's first talk about what pantoprazole is. So pantoprazole is a medication used to treat gastroesophageal reflux disease, or GERD, so it's used to treat symptoms of acid reflux. It is a proton pump inhibitor, or PPI, which is a medication that reduces the action of proton pumps. So proton pumps are these little pumps that occur on certain cells in the stomach called parietal cells. And these cells actually pump out H plus ion, which are protons. These are what acidifies the stomach. And PPIs like pantoprazole actually inhibit those proton pumps. So the stomach doesn't become as acidified as it should. And this is why it treats symptoms of gastroesophageal reflux disease. And along with pantoprazole, there are other PPIs, including omeprazole as well. And again, these PPIs act to inhibit H plus or hydrogen ion pumping into the stomach to acidify the stomach. So they lead to a reduction in stomach acidity, which would actually mean that pH of the stomach rises. But the problem with pentoprazole use, including other PPIs like omeprazole, is that they can cause a variety of mild side effects and other potential medical issues like nutrient deficiencies and infections. And we're going to talk about those as we go through this lesson. Now let's talk about the side effects. So the side effects we're going to talk about are going to be more specific to pantoprazole use, but they can apply to other PPIs like omeprazole as well. So the first side effect I want to talk about is a headache. So headaches are actually one of the most common side effects of pantoprazole use, and they're generally mild in severity, and they can occur in up to 4% of patients. Abdominal pain is also another common side effect, and it occurs in approximately 4% of patients as well. And this abdominal pain can co-occur with other gastrointestinal manifestations, which we're going to talk about in the next upcoming slides. So some of those gastrointestinal manifestations include bowel habit changes. So bowel habit changes can include watery diarrhea. So watery diarrhea can occur in some patients that use pantoprazole and other PPIs, and it occurs in roughly 4% of patients. And some other patients may also experience constipation, which can occur in roughly 4% of patients as well. So some patients may have both watery diarrhea and constipation, and some will just have either watery diarrhea or constipation. And we can also see issues with increased flatulence as well with pantoprazole use. We can also see issues with nausea and vomiting with proton pump inhibitor use. So nausea can occur in approximately 1% of patients. Vomiting or regurgitation is more likely to occur, and this can occur in up to 4% of patients. We can also see issues with chest pain in some patients. So this can actually be one of the more common side effects of pantoprazole use, and roughly 4% of patients are affected by this. Dizziness can also be a side effect as well. So feeling dizzy, generally mild dizziness is something that may be noted with patients who use PPIs like pantoprazole. Pruritus can also be another side effect. Pruritus is going to be an itching sensation. It can be generalized and multiple areas of the body may feel itchy. And up to 4% of patients who use pantoprazole can have itching or pruritus. We can also see issues with skin rashes as well. So skin redness and inflammation can occur. Hives can occur in some patients. So these bumps or swellings can occur. And this also can be generalized as well. And approximately 4% of patients that use proton pump inhibitors can be affected with skin rash. Facial swelling is also another side effect of pantoprazole use, so this is going to be otherwise known as facial edema, so lips and tongue may become swollen, and this may occur in less than 4% of patients. Generally speaking, the facial swelling is not going to be severe, but if it starts to affect lips and tongue more severely, or even into the throat, this can cause issues with airway obstruction, so this can be a significant side effect in some patients. And then another side effect can be other bodily swelling, so this can be a generalized edema, so there can be swelling of extremities, feet, ankles, and hands, and this generally occurs in less than 2% of patients. Now, some other important nutrient issues that we can see with pantoprazole use is hypomagnesemia. So hypomagnesemia is going to be a low magnesium level in the blood. And generally speaking, this is thought to be a rare occurrence, but a lot of times patients may be seen in hospital, they're on a proton pump inhibitor for long periods of time, and they have lower magnesium levels than they should, and sometimes the proton pump inhibitor can actually be the cause of the low magnesium level. And generally speaking, as I just alluded to, the hypomagnesemia, or the low magnesium level, is going to occur more commonly in patients that have been taking pantoprazole long term, and generally speaking, more than a year. And along with this, if patients are on a diuretic like furosemide or Lasix, they're at an even higher risk for hypomagnesemia. So pantoprazole itself can 
cause a lower magnesium level. And then the diuretic can also lower magnesium levels as well. So we can have a even larger drop in magnesium levels. And then another important finding in pentoprazole patients and other proton pump inhibitor patients is a vitamin B12 or cobalamin deficiency. So this is going to more likely occur in patients taking proton pump inhibitors long term, especially greater than three years. And it may cause signs and symptoms of vitamin B12 deficiency if more severe. And the reason that this can occur is that because the proton pump inhibitors are reducing the acidity in the stomach, the stomach is not able to digest certain nutrients as well as it should. So you need a certain very low pH level, so that would mean a very high acidity, in order to access some of those nutrients in food that we eat. If the acidity is not strong enough, if the pH is too high, then we're going to have issues accessing some nutrients, and vitamin B12 is one of them. So because of that higher pH in the stomach, meaning again, a lower acidity level in the stomach, we can have issues with absorption of vitamin B12, which can lead to a deficiency. So with patients who are on proton pump inhibitors long term, it's important to also supplement them with vitamin B12. So even though they're not able to absorb it as efficiently as they should, giving them more via supplementation can help restore their vitamin B12 levels. We can also see issues with gastrointestinal infections. So there is an increased risk of C. difficile or Clostridium difficile associated diarrhea. And this is generally speaking going to occur when a patient has just had some antibiotic for another reason. So if they're on pantoprazole and they're taking an antibiotic for some other infection after the antibiotic use, so post-antibiotic period, they are at a higher risk for Clostridium difficile infections. So in general, patients who have just completed an antibiotic treatment are at a higher risk for gastrointestinal infections like Clostridium difficile, but if you're on pantoprazole at the same time, you're at an even higher risk of having Clostridium difficile. And not only C. difficile, but you're also at an increased risk for other bacterial infections as well. So you're at an increased risk for bacterial gastroenteritis, so infections with C. jejuni and Salmonella infections, even without an antibiotic use. So the reason that this may be the case with proton pump inhibitor use, such as pantoprazole, is because of, again, its ability to reduce the acidity in the stomach. So because there's less acidity in the stomach with PPI use, the acidity is not killing or destroying microbes like bacteria, like some of the ones that we just mentioned here, as effectively as it should. So if patients have a higher acidity level in their stomach, they're more likely to essentially destroy some of these bacteria before they can cause an infection. Whereas with patients who are on pantoprazole or other PPIs, they have a lower acidity level. So bacteria are more able to survive in their stomach and get into other parts of their gastrointestinal system, like their small intestine and their large intestines. So this is the reason why we can see a higher risk of gastrointestinal infections with proton pump inhibitor use. And some other side effects or long-term medical issues that can occur with pantoprazole use is osteoporosis and bone fractures. So there can be increased risk of osteoporosis and bone fractures with long-term use of pantoprazole. So there's a higher likelihood of fractures to hip, wrist, and spine. And again, this is often going to be many, many years on pantoprazole or other PPIs. So the exact reason as to why this may occur is not entirely understood. But if you are on PPI like pantoprazole for very long periods of time, many, many years, you are at a higher risk for osteoporosis than the general population. And then another important associated finding with very long-term pantoprazole use is dementia risk. So there may be an increased risk of dementia with long-term use. And I say may increase risk because the connection is not entirely understood. There is some association with very long-term pantoprazole use and a higher risk for dementia. So I do want to mention that here. And again, the underlying mechanism is unknown. So because of all of these effects that we just talked about, including the increased dementia risk, it can be advised to actually cease or stop taking a proton pump inhibitor like pantoprazole at least once per year to assess whether the patient actually requires it. Pantoprazole is one of those medications that can be started on patients and then the patient will stay on it for extended periods of time where they actually don't need it. So again, the pantoprazole can be stopped to see if they actually need it. If their acid reflux comes back, then they can be put back on it. If it doesn't, then they don't require it. Perhaps they've changed some of their lifestyle to help 
some of their acid reflux symptoms. So I do want to mention that because of some of these associated risks like hypomagnesemia, vitamin B12 deficiency, osteoporosis, and dementia risk. Please also check out my lesson on what to avoid if you are taking pantoprazole. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thank you so much for watching and hope to see you next time.